for real speakers is the brand new Apple TV Plus original film. They bought it after this film won the Sundance Audience Award for $15 million, which was the biggest uh, buy at the Sundance Film Festival. This film is written, directed, and starring Cooper Rafe, also starred and produced by Dakota Johnson, as well as other actors as Vanessa Bur uh, Burkhart, Evan Asante, Brad Garrett, uh, Raul Castillo, and uh, Odea Rush, and Leslie Mann. And tell the story about Cooper Rafe's character, who is just kind of out of college, and he's kind of doesn't know what to do with his life. He's kind of stuck. Um, he is a party starter at bar and bat mitzvahs. He works at a, a fast food restaurant in the movie called Meat Sticks. And he, and he finds this um, woman who's the mother of autistic daughter. The daughter's played by Vanessa Burkhart and the mom is played by Dakota Johnson. And he starts to build a real friendship with Dakota Johnson's uh, domino character. The film is an hour and 47 minutes and is rated R. Welcome back to a brand new movie review here on Max Talks Movies. My name is Max Jimberg. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. I do these types of movie reviews, TV show reviews, movie rankings at box office breakdown shows. Please comment down below. First of all, if, if, have you seen this film? If, if you went to Sunday and something, if you saw the film, if not, is this one of your favorite films of the year? Do you think this film can make it to Oscar season? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, are, are just on Buzz, are you going to check it out this weekend on Apple? There's so much coming out this weekend. And also, please like the video, guys. Thumbs up button really helps some more people be recommended to this review. So I was excited for this film because, as I said earlier, this won the Audience Award at Sundance. This movie has gone at South by Southwest, Tribeca, all the big film festivals this year. This film has been at... Um, the idea of, again, Dakota Johnson has been really good for such a long time. And I'm excited to see her now, once again, another leading type role. Um, but I didn't know the story whatsoever. I didn't see a single trailer. I just saw a, a picture online of the movie, which was a scene between Rafe and Johnson. Another interesting note that this is Dakota Johnson's company's first ever movie. So Dakota Johnson is a producer on this film as well. And Cooper Rafe obviously is the producer, um, director, and writer. His second directorial film, his first film that I, it's a curse word, so I don't want to say here on this review, but um, did very well. But this film, winning all these awards, uh, being the biggest purchase from a streaming service at Sundance for $15 million to Apple TV+. Plus, So got me excited. Let's talk about this movie. So I'm just going to be out here. This is my favorite movie of the year so far this year. And that says a lot because this has been, for me, a pretty good year for movies. So this is a great movie. I really love this movie from start to finish. It's a perfect balance of a usual dramedy, rom-com, but the movie feels very unpredictable as well because while most of these type films usually fall into those usual fantasy element cliches of the romantic genre, the comedy drama, the relationship um, type films, all these type of things have their cliches. And while this film wants to tip its line, tiptoe into them a little bit. It says, we're actually gonna make this a more real, realistic and authentic story. And that's one of the biggest compliments with the film is that these are a amazing set of actors and characters. You really care about almost any, all of the main featured characters in the film. Um, and I wanted to spend a lot more time uh, with these characters. That's how much I just really love this movie. Obviously the biggest plus is Cooper Rafe, who did an amazing job, uh, obviously writing and acting. We'll get to that in a sec, but his direction is very simple. And this is a very simple story. And most other films like this will have a director who just puts his flair, or his or her flair on it to make the film pop or more. But what Rafe does, which makes this film very special is that he just lets the story, the actors and the characters speak for themselves. His direction is very simple. It actually, it does add to the movie but there's no distracting shots. It's all about the story and the characters, which is a something that I wish other directors would do. I know other uh, directors who just want to add their own flair to do that, just to be themselves. And I, I, I respect that. But for me, what makes this film really good is also race understanding that it's the story and the characters that matter in this movie. Um, his writing is on point. Um, but his performance is really great. And this guy, I do believe, will be a star in Hollywood for some years to come. He's so young, and this is an absolutely fantastic performance as well. Um, 
He's charming. You really understand emotionally where his mindset is at just with his facial reactions. And it's amazing how he has amazing chemistry with each of his big characters and storylines in the whole movie. He has kind of three key people, or really four key people that he has relationships with. Um, Domino, played by Dakota Johnson, and her daughter Lola, played by Vance Burkhart, and then his younger brother, David, played by Evan Asante, and then his mom, played by Leslie Mann. All are just such key relationships and dynamics in the movie, and they just feel, as I said, like real people, and Cooper Wraith is a perfect protagonist um, to have in this movie. He's really, really charming, um, and you're just rooting for whatever to happen in his life, you want it to go in the direction that he wants it to. Um, another, just again, well, Cooper Rave is definitely the star of the show as a writer, director, and actor. I, I still, the best performance in this entire movie continues to be um, Domino, played by Dakota Johnson, who is way beyond the Fifty Shades days. She's currently, in my opinion, one of the best working actresses today and she plays a it's a really great character but she's really fantastic in the movie she plays this early 30s mom who has this autistic daughter um, her first husband left them and she's now has this new fiance and then she kind of builds this relationship with um, Andrew played by Cooper Wraith and they have fantastic on-screen chemistry um, just great chemistry and you're just rooting for them the whole movie to be a couple and it's um, I don't want to spoil anything but it's just when you're rooting for them this much it just shows you the chemistry is on point but Domino is also such a fascinating character just trying to figure out where does she fit in this adulthood having an autistic daughter having the daughter so early in her life um, and understanding um, also one of the big my favorite ideas of the movie is soulmates how everyone has lots of different soulmates that cross them in their lives um and i uh, the idea of soulmates there's a one scene between andrew and i don't know which is just really great when they're just andrew's explaining that everyone has so many soulmates and they're always on your path and i thought that was a, a really lovely way of looking at it but domino just is such a fascinating character you just want to keep learning more about her her daughter uh played by vanessa burkhart is fantastic um, she's also really great. And her and Andrew have a really special dynamic because Andrew would babysit for Domino. And Andrew's kind of the only non-family member that can really talk with Lola and kind of hang out with her. And I felt like that was also a really special relationship to have in the movie. Um, Evan Asante, who plays David, uh, Andrew's younger brother, is also really excellent, especially towards the last, uh, the third act of the movie where his stuff comes to a satisfying conclusion and him and Andrew's relationship is great because David really looks up and admires his older brother. And even when, you know, Andrew yells at him at multiple points, they're still brothers. I thought that brother relationship, again, felt like real brothers. And then the relationship with um, Andrew's mom played by Leslie Mann is also really great. And it's weird because I wasn't, I was thinking it was a good relationship and a really good dynamic then there's a scene together with them in the last 20 minutes of the movie that really hit me. And it was a, I was shocked how much I was really emotionally invested in that mother son relationship and when's too far to get involved. Um, what's the happy medium and um, what, the, what, the, what that relationship meant to Andrew's childhood is one of the major storylines with the film is, you know, she is bipolar and he didn't really feel like he had the greatest childhood, but I think that relationship has done so so well all the performances are really good but as i said the writing the story you just care about all of the different characters and storylines um i think a lot of people obviously are going to compare this to coda because just like last year sundance coda was bought for the biggest money at sundance by apple this film as well and i really hope this is a type of film that for some reason probably won't be during oscar season which i think really sucks because these are the type of movies that yes this movie mixes perfectly heartbreak and just a whimsical, positive movie. There's tons of positivity and there's also some heartbreak, but for some reason, you still feel positive. It's definitely a crowd pleaser, but not the way most romantic comedies or dramedies work in the genre. It's a different type of satisfying movie that I think makes sense um, for these characters in the movie. So overall, just a fantastic film. I do want to say my one kind of critique in the movie, one or two, there's like one scene where Andrew 
uh, kind of got a bit too mad and it just kind of comes out of nowhere at a little bit. I, I, I understand what the scene is. I just kind of came out of nowhere. And then there's a couple scenes towards the end of the movie that just kind of feel a bit too repetitive. But overall, other than those minor critiques, I loved this film from start to finish. I think it's one of the best films, if not for me right now, it's my favorite movie of the year. Go check this one out on Apple TV Plus. And if you're someone who wants these type of movies to make it to Oscar season, I know it came out in June, but if you want to make it uh, be on this journey for the next 10 months with this movie, um, go support it. Go talk about this movie. Go share the word of mouth. These are the type of movies I think that people need to be watching more these days. And I'm, I'm going to give Cha Cha Wheels movie a 4.5 out of 5, 97%. One of my favorite movies of the year. So that's my thoughts on this film. Please like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you guys very soon with some more reviews coming soon.